sure if we uh, need a bowling referee or a boxing referee here after Phil Scalos is. We're going to take him down. I mean, that's that's fighting talk. Fighting talk indeed, yes. Um, Nick, this is doubles. Scotch doubles. So uh, Bill will lead off for the USA. And uh, don't forget, if he doesn't strike, Tim will have to take his spare. Yep. Here's the joker from Cleveland, Ohio. Bill Hoffman with that curious stance of his. But it works. It can be effective. Ooh. And he can be lucky as well. Tim says, well, how did you do that? He nearly, nearly left himself the 7-10 split. And then he gets a strike. It was a bit of, tr bit of trick bowling, I think. Um, you can see how far left Bill is bowling that ball, really wide out to the right and ripping back into the pocket. Seven pen stands, but uh, they both go in the end. Now here's a man who's not had much luck in this tournament so far. This lane has not been kind to Thomas Lee Anderson. Needs to get off to a good start. See what I mean? That could so easily have gone, but the ten pinners stood up for him. And it means that, as you say, Cass, in this doubles format, this Scotch doubles, they take it in turns. It means that Phil Scammell, who was in terrific form in the opening match, has just got a single pin to bowl at. Yeah, Phil, but this is a really good shot from Thomas. It's a nice soft shot, rotation on the ball, and that ten pin really should have gone, but look at it wobble. It's not what Phil would have wanted for himself, is it? The single pin to aim at, but at least it's one he can dispose of without too much difficulty. Yeah, he made it look easy. Made it look easy. Now here's a fellow who's made a career of making it look easy, Tim Mack. Nobody kind of gets the high backswing that Tim Mack manages and the rotation down the lane and the velocity of that ball is, is one of the, the factors that makes him such a good player. You just watch the backswing on this. Practically takes off with it. Uh, a little bit heavy on the head pin, but so much power behind the ball that he takes a lot of the pins with him. Yeah, he's a little bit inside the mark here. A lot of rotation and power, as you explained. Um, didn't quite make the pocket. But it has left a uh, quite a simple spare for Bill to pick up. It's the three pin. Yeah, enough pin action there to just leave the one standing. And Hoffman should get rid of that without any problems at all. Oh, freak out. Oh, So a chance for Lee Anderson now. He struggled in his first doubles match with his good mate Tora Torgerson. Really took him a while to find the strike zone. I think he had three spares to open up with, so Torgerson didn't even get to bowl at a strike until frame five, I think it was. They can't afford that kind of start here. It's very unusual, Nick, that uh, he hasn't got into his strike line straight away. That's better. I didn't speak too soon. Well, hopefully that's, hopefully that's Thomas Leanderson turned the corner now and just worked this lane out. Yeah, he's uh, following it coast to coast, shall we say. He's standing wide left and throwing the ball right out to the right. And it just draw itself back into the pocket. Great shot. Here's the native New Jersey man, Tim Mack. Just batters those pins into submission, doesn't he? Well, the lane is 60 foot long, but I'm sure uh, Tim's ball travels about 62 feet because it goes out so far and then comes back so far. Just watch the hook on this ball. See where he's standing, right, left. And there it goes, right in the 1-3 pocket. Those pins stay no chance. So, USA in the groove. Here's Phil Scammell from Shoreham on the south coast of England. His first Weber Cup, but a vastly experienced player. Ooh, he went the wrong side, missed the head pin and left himself a split that, frankly, that ball deserved. A dreadful shot from Phil. Yes, that's right, Nick. It wasn't very good at all. It's uh, hit the head pin on the left-hand side, going away with the hook. It's a, what we call a very light hit. It's left the five pin and the ten pin which is a horrible spear for Thomas to have to take. Gettable, but he's just got to flip that leading pin across, and uh, most uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic of Phil Scammell, that. Yeah, he's got to be very accurate here, is Thomas. Very accurate indeed. 
And of course, if he doesn't make it, it's an open frame and uh, Team Europe will be behind. Oh, nice shot. That's a captain's performance. Made it looked so easy, didn't it, Cass? Gary Verbruggen, another Team Europe member, enjoyed that one. Yeah, he played it beautifully. Nice, straightened the shot out nicely and just clipped that five pin on the left-hand side and it bounced over, took the ten pin away. So it means that they're still in touch, Team Europe. If that had been an open frame, Bill Hoffman really could have uh, clobbered them while they were down. As it is, a strike here can just keep the Americans in the box seat. Terrific ball from the Joker. Nick, I don't know if you've noticed, both Tim and Bill are playing exactly the same line, same part of the lane, pushing it out wide to the right and just letting it drift back. Thomas and Phil, on the other hand, seem to be playing straighter down the lane. Now, just watch this. Stands way left and it rips the rack. So here's Phil, who in the Baker game earlier was, was the only European that could get anything going but I, I wonder if these lane conditions have changed on Phil without him uh, being aware of them. That film of oil does dry out under these lights and it requires adjustments to be made. Now what's Phil got here? Oh, he's heavy on the head pin. Well, I wonder if this lane has changed for Phil. Well, I actually spoke to Phil before this match and um, he did say that the lights were having some effect. It's really hot down there and of course it, uh, it will dry out some of that lane conditioning oil. And um, that could be the reason that he's not quite made the pocket yet. At least it's an easier spare now for Thomas to uh, dispose of. No margin for error there whatsoever, but once again a spare. Not really good enough for Team Europe, not when the Americans are striking the way they are. And I tell you what, just generally speaking, these Americans really have grabbed this Weber Cup by the, the scruff of the throat. I know it's early, but it's, it's ominous as well, Cass. They're in terrific form. Well, they don't seem to have let the um, possible change in lane condition affect their game. They've made the adjustments uh, to suit their style, to suit the lane that they're playing on, and they're striking it well. They really are locked in. Even I'll take that one, said Mac. Yeah, even when it's not a perfect pocket hit. Nice yeah, he knows it's uh, not a good shot. It's crossed the left-hand side of the head pin, the and it has taken all ten pins out. We call that a Brooklyn strike. It's not, not the perfect shot, but hey, when you've got two in a row and that's three in a row, you'll accept it. Extends the lead of Team USA. As the pins get racked for Phil Scammell. overcompensating. Yeah, now that shot's gone straight on. It's left the two pin and the ten pin. He didn't make the pocket at all. The ball just didn't rotate enough to turn up to the pocket. And unfortunately, Thomas has to shoot this spear. Mind you, he's having some practice at uh, picking up splits, having picked up the 5-10 not so long ago. Can he keep it going? No. Uh, you can see what he's trying to do, just get the thinnest of contacts to just spin that pin over to knock out the 10 and it didn't come off. And Team Europe are in deep trouble here. Yes, it's unfortunate. It's a very good pairing, uh, Leanderson and Scammell, but um, they're being shot to pieces at the moment, I'm afraid. Bill Hoffman looking to reinforce this American advantage even further. And this time it's his turn to be a bit light on the head pin and... Uh, Got what he deserved this time, and uh, the pressure on Tim Mack to try and get a spare here. Isn't that strange? It's the uh, identical split that uh, Phil left, the two and the ten pin. You know, maybe they've uh, both played in the same area of the lane, and the ball's just slid on a little bit. It could be that the oil is moving around, the lane condition is being affected by the lights. And um, I think Bill knew that one the moment it left his hand as well. You saw him kind of waving it in. Mack putting everything behind that spare, and... It doesn't get the bounce out he was looking for, so an open frame from the Americans, and if Phil Scammell can strike here, Team Europe could be back in it. And, uh, he hasn't left the building, Tim Mack. I think he's just got to get a bit of tape, maybe, just to uh, make an adjustment to the, um, the grip on the ball. No, he's gone to get a new ball. Yeah, he's um, going to make the adjustment.
get himself a new ball out. He'll hopefully feel more comfortable with that one. Looking for a different reaction. So, despite that open frame, there's a real chance for the Europeans to get themselves back into it here if Phil can find the line. He's certainly been struggling with this ball. Well, that looks a lot better. A timely strike indeed from Phil Scammell. That changes the uh, complexion of the game just a little bit, doesn't it? From an American romp, it's um, tightened up a little bit. That's right, yeah, it is a rather good shot from Phil. Tim Mack giving himself some options. Yeah, he's just seeing how comfortable that ball feels on his hand before his next shot. And here's the fellow that had the split last time, Bill Hoffman. Has he made an adjustment? Yeah, that looked much better, although he doesn't get the strike. At least he was in the pocket. Yeah, it came up just a little bit light. The ball sort of ran on, just acknowledging the crowd there, Bill. The joker, as always. Single pin spare for Tim to take. But a spare here, and this really is automatic for Tim Mack. He's not going to miss this. Uh, a spare for the Americans, and uh, that deficit just gets reduced a little bit further, possibly, if Thomas Lee Anderson can come up with a strike. The Americans enjoying themselves out there, but I tell you what, if Thomas can come up with a strike here, this thing is going to get very close. As you said, Nick, the Americans seem to be enjoying themselves, but uh, Thomas looks a bit pensive. Uh, they're trailing and they know they need to get something going. They're working on a strike, but they desperately need the double. Terrific result, and once again, when the chips are down and the pressure's on, Thomas Lee Anderson rises to the occasion. And yeah. now look how close it is. Fantastic shot, that really was a good shot from Thomas, and it will do his confidence a word of good. Hoffman is uh, relaxed as ever. The word pressure does not exist in this man's vocabulary. Curious corkscrew stance of his. Very heavy on the head pin, and uh, I don't think this is a time to be smiling and celebrating as far as the Americans are concerned. And Hoffman does walk rather slowly back past his captain. Yeah, he's. Uh, I thought he was sharing a joke with someone in the crowd a bit earlier, just before that shot. But he was. Uh, this is not a time to be uh, joking around, I don't think. No, it's not all over yet. Far from it. Mac makes sure of the spare, but a strike here from Scammell and uh, Bill Hoffman and his partner are going to find themselves behind. It's certainly tightening right, right up, uh, Nick, as you say. If a team group can put a strike in here, it'll be three in a row and a turkey. And they'll be right back in the game with two frames to go. Now this really is a big time ball from Phil Scammell. Team Europe needing the strike. They've been given the opportunity by the Americans, who've gone right off the boil. Yeah, the door's open. It's just a matter of whether they're going to walk through it or not. Scammell, who made the adjustment for the strike last time. <laughs> Can he keep it? Yes! Three in a row, and the Europeans are right in this. Just a four-pin de deficit now after that three in a row. And Hoffman is the man that's lost the line. And he better get it back in a hurry. And you'll notice he's not joking with the crowd now, because this is an important ball for Bill Hoffman. Wide hooking. Dear, oh dear. 2 7 baby split on the left hand side of the lane. And that's not an easy spare because um, Bill's not going to take it. He's, he's going to leave it for Tim to take. He's just lost the line, hasn't he, Cass? It, it was looking easy, and now it's... Yeah, again, it's just drifted a bit wide. It's, it's hung out there and hasn't quite made the pocket on the way back. And Mac needs to make this just to keep the Americans in touch. Gettable, but not a gimme. <laughs> made it look very easy. Unless your name's Tim Mac. Yeah. Made it look very easy, as he said. Spare ball. Very simple. The Americans are still within touching distance, but there's a chance here in frame nine. 
for Thomas Lee Anderson just to really push the Europeans over the edge. Important frame, frame nine. They call it the foundation frame. This is where you build your strong finish. So a four-bagger here from Thomas Lee Anderson will put the Europeans in terrific shape. Can he do it? Oh, yes, in there like swimwear. Fabulous shot for Thomas, absolutely great. Four strikes in a row for Team Europe, and they're, um, yeah, they're a lot happier now because they've just got their noses in front. And they needed this, the Europeans. They haven't won it yet, but if they lose this, this partnership, USA is 4-1 ahead, and that's a big gap so early. And Hoffman, whose game has just deserted him in the latter half of this affair, needs to get back in the strike zone in a hurry. Like that, but is it too late? Great shot. Tim's taking... Uh, Bill's taking time with the crowd. That's his last shot of the match. Tim to finish off frame 10. Through the 200 barrier for Team USA. Two strikes in frame 10, and the last shot will be bowled by Bill Hoffman. In case you're wondering who he's talking to, that's his teammates are sat over there, and uh, he's just having a few words. Like Tony Mann is up there. There's Tony with the glasses. Looking pretty laid back as ever, the Americans. Now, can they finish with a strike here? It's on the head pin. It went into the Brooklyn pocket. And they finish with a flourish and a 2-1-2 finish. So the bar has been set by Team USA. Can Phil Scammell and Thomas Lee Anderson clear it? Pressure time for Phil Scammell. Frame 10. Team Europe working on three strikes. Taking his time. Phil, who struggled so much in the early going, then seems to have found his line. Can he find the line again? <laughs> Looks like a victory for Europe. A high five there, a fabulous shot from Phil Scammell. And I think Tim's acknowledged it as well. And good to see this for Phil, who was having such difficulties earlier on. And, you know, you wondered what had happened. And he's made the adjustment. And he's bowling at the level we know he's capable of. That is the thing with this year's Weber Cup. That there's not a bad bowler to be seen. All ten of these men are world-class performers. And here's the skipper, Thomas Lee Anderson. Hopefully to clinch it for the Europeans. Ooh, he's gone. Brooklyn. Simple nine, that's an easy spare for Phil, and that will be a game set and match for Europe. But they never do it the easy way, do they? It is victory. <laughs> but once again, not entirely convincing from Team Europe. They just wobbled across the finish line first. And having made a very slow start, Phil Scammell and Thomas Leanderson got their game together at just in the nick of time, and then they survived a late scare to win it by 2.22 to 2.12. A 10-point margin of victory, and this year's Weber Cup is now delicately balanced at USA 3, Europe 2.